I want to know which rifle light is the best one. This is the first video in a three-part series. In this first video, we're going to cover four premium rifle lights, and we're gonna see which one is best. In video two, we're going to compare three budget rifle lights. And finally, in video three, we're gonna put each of these seven lights to the destructive testing and see which one is most durable. So what makes a good rifle light? A number of components go into the characteristics of the perfect rifle light. So there are technical components, those are features such as lumens, the total amount of light output out of the front of the light, candela, the ability of the light to focus those lumens into a particular direction. We've also got color temperature and CRI, and there are practical considerations such as activation. And finally, there's a subjective consideration of does the beam have the right amount of spill, the right amount of flood? These are all considerations we're gonna take a look at today. So the first of the four premium lights is the Cloud Defensive Rain 3, which is supposed to have 100,000 candela. It also has a slimmer head. And of course, it does come with the remote switch, which is a nice adder that saves you a fair amount of money versus some of the other lights where you'd have to go ahead and purchase a separate remote switch. Now, given that Cloud Defensive keeps releasing better and better lights, I expect this to be an excellent performer. Looking at it here, it's got a hot, hot spot and then it's got a nice defined flood. It looks like it's fairly wide and fairly high output. I think that this is going to be a contender for the top light. The second light is the Surefire Turbo Scout Light Pro. This is an 18650 battery version. We've also got the 18350, which I'm not gonna talk about here. And it has that upgraded turbo capability with the super hot hotspot, and then go, goes ahead and has a nice defined flood as well. Our third light is a relative newcomer. It is the HRT AWLS. This light is a little bit different in that it's got a switch on the back that is a press in to click activate, but then you can also push it just about any direction to go ahead and activate, activate that light. This also has a really nice hot, hot spot and quite a bit of light coming out the front for that flood. I think that this may be a surprise in terms of our testing. If you don't need or want this switch, you can replace the tail cap with one that is built for a Surefire Scout and go ahead and get a remote and uh, run it like you would any of these other lights. Finally, we've got our old standby, a bit of a benchmark around here. Here is the mod light with the OKW. It has what we expect out of mod light. That's super hot hotspot and a nice flood around the edge. We've tested the heck out of this light. We know that it performs well. We purchased this one new to have for this test run up so that it is exactly what you would expect uh, if you were to purchase one today. So the first chart I wanna look at is the overall light output chart that is from when we first turn it on to when the light essentially stops producing any useful light. So the first thing I notice is that these lights put out a significant amount of light up to about an hour and a half, and then some of them start dropping off. Now, the standout in the first hour and a half really is that Cloud Defensive Rain 3.0. It has tremendous output, and I really like how Sean and the company at Cloud have tune this light to try to provide a fair amount of output for the first 10 minutes or so, and then allow it to stay at those high levels for as long as possible, and then it kind of falls off as you would expect to happen. The next thing to look at is HRT with the AWLS did something similar. Unfortunately, they start off as the highest output light and then drop off fairly quickly and then stay flat at a high output level for as long as it can, and then it falls off about the uh, two hour mark. And then from there, the Surefire and the ModLite OKW both have similar output curves and both have a, a similar level of output with the Surefire having a little bit higher lumen output. Now I said I like to get a lot of output at the beginning, let's take a look at the 10 minute chart. In this chart, I see that the HRT AWLS has the highest total output of lumens for the first minute and a half, almost reaching 1,250 lumens, which is really nice. That is followed, of course, by the Cloud Defensive Rain 3, 
and it has starts off right around a thousand and drops off. In here, the standout is really the Cloud Defensive Rain 3. Nice job, Cloud Defensive. So let's talk max lumens. So there's the absolute max, which is the max that a light will produce. And then there is ANSI Play-Doh, which does an average of the light output from 30 seconds to two minutes. Those numbers are interesting, but they can be gamed somewhat by the manufacturer. The HRT AWLS has the best absolute max and the best FL1 measurements. But we just saw in our 10 minute chart and our full run chart that the Cloud Defensive really is the standout in terms of providing great consistent light output. What I want you to take away from this chart is that manufacturer ratings can be deceiving. What you need is an independent lab to provide you with information on what the lights do for the first 10 minutes, first two hours, or their full runtime. And you need to be able to compare that to see how the light really performs. Max output is not as interesting. Every single one of these lights is going to give you the runtime you need to run that full night, night class, or that operation. If you need more than an hour and a half, bring a extra charged 18650 batteries with you. Okay, let's take a break from that lumen data for a minute, and let's take a look at beam shots. These tell a huge story. So the first is the Cloud Defensive Rain 3.0. And you can see in this beam shot that not only am I getting blasted in the face with pretty high output light, the rest of the warehouse space is being lit up pretty nicely. The next is the Surefire Turbo Scout Light Pro. And you can see that this one has a super strong hotspot, less flood. Next is the HRT AWLS, and that one is a lot more like the RAIN 3. It provides that super strong hotspot plus good amount of flood. And finally, the OKW, that one looks a lot more like the Surefire. Now let's talk Candela. The measurement here is using NC Play-Doh standards, you let that light run for 30 seconds on a fresh battery, and then you measure your max Candela. You see a little bit of drop off both for the, uh, the RAIN 3 and the Scout, uh, the Scout Turbo. The AWLS and the OKW both stayed fairly constant. I don't know how important that is really. All of these lights provide really good Candela output. Up next is the OKW from Modlight, Surefire Pro, and last but not least, the Rain 3.0. Wow. All right, so we have a target way up out there at 300 yards. It's a white facing Eptic target, and we have the HRT AWLS, so you can find it. And it is right there in the center of that hot spot. I can definitely see that. And then up next, the OKW. First, let's identify out there. We can see that. All right, let's go to the, sure, the new Surefire Pro. Go and get on target first. And last, finally, we got the Rain 3.0. Go ahead and identify first. We are on target. That might be the best of all of them there. See that far out. I really like the AWLS on this one too. That's really doing a good job punching out there. If I haven't overloaded you with data yet, let's hit one last thing, which is light quality and color temperature. So CRI is a measurement of how close the light output spectrum is to what the sun puts out at midday. Now, if you're trying to identify someone, you might want to know if their hoodie is purple or brown. You want to know if the dark stuff on their hands is blood or green paint. And CRI is the measurement for that. Tactical lights are notorious for having lowish CRIs, usually CRI in the 60 to 70 range. In this case, the RAIN 3 is by far the best one at 71.8 CRI. Jameson, I asked you to go ahead and mount these up and run them on a rifle and give me your thoughts as far as the practical usage. Yeah, so my, my favorite out of everything here is gonna be the RAIN 3.0 had the best balance of a good hotspot and good flood at the same time. It was usable all the way around at various applications. Uh, something like the OKW has a really good hotspot, but not nearly as much flood to be able to use. That would be a downside in my case. I'm not trying to put a light on the right on my general rifle for one purpose. I want it for to kind of cover more things, right? Whether it be closer in or further out for distance. You can tell that 
cloud defensive is paying attention to some of the details. By the way they slope their output curve, it is one of the most consistent rifle light output curves that I have seen. They are really trying to keep that output high for as long as possible. Yes, it eventually slopes off and, and falls off a cliff and does so earlier than the other lights, but it's still an hour and a half of light. What would your number two pick be? Probably HRT. And part of why I say that, I really like having pressure pads that works with Scout stuff. So I can run the Surefire stuff with that and I have my pressure pad. Or I can choose to run with that how it is too. Yeah, so $400, you'd get it with a good pressure pad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree. I think from a, from a technical perspective, it's really good. I like what HRT did here. I'm, I'm rather shocked as far as them being a little bit of a newcomer. What's your number three pick? Probably the Surefire, I think in this case. The way that, you, that it mounts is really slick and that's unique, and I prefer that. That's a lot better, right? And then cost-wise, it still comes in underneath the mod light. <laughs> yeah. So. And it looks like a real solid product. We've always been impressed with their durability. We will see how durable it is <laughs> in our destructive testing. I would agree. I think technical output is real good on it. It's really close to the mod light. And the mod light really is a benchmark and you and I a year ago were running the heck out of those lights because mm -hmm. we thought at the time they were the best ones. Okay, mod light, you know, the gauntlet's been tossed. <laughs> You've got an opportunity to, to help continue to advance the industry here. All right, there you have it. Cloud Defensive Rain 3 or the HRT. Those are our top picks. If you love geeking out on weapon lights, please check out my personal blog at lowlightdefense.com where I've got all this data and so much more. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day.